Welcome to Mysteries in Crime. I'm your host, Melissa Thompson. Today marks 29 days since Summer Moon Utah Wells has gone missing, and we are no closer to finding out where she is. However, Don Wells has been talking a lot, and I want to discuss that with you guys. Now, two days ago, he posted uh, two different things on his Facebook account that I really would like to go over with you all. Okay, he said first, I think these dreams, mine, my wife's, and now this good person in Florida, I don't know. I think that my daughter is thinking or dreaming of how her life was. I believe she's in serious trouble. I pray that the great God of Israel, the living God, will please. I beg and plead with you, Lord of Lords, please bring these abductors down speedily. Please, Lord, end this for the sake of the remnant or small amount of Christians still left in our country. For these sake, Lord, God, please, for this nightmare be over, Lord God, the mighty one, King of kings, we praise and love you, God, thank you. And then he threw a 15-year-old under the bus. Yes, he did, you guys. I'm not going to say his name because, yes, he is a minor. He's 15 years old. Don Wells posted a picture of H, and I'm assuming maybe two friends. And he said, why did, and he states his name, H's family suddenly turn on us after Summer's disappearance? Okay, Don, that's quite interesting because I'm pretty sure that according to your wife and the statement that Allison made to Unmask, that they weren't talking way before this happened because when Allison said in her interview to On Mass that Candace and her were fighting over that man Jose and after the incident was with Jose they weren't getting along anymore however Candace continued to see H he was over their house he would go places with them and we know that for a fact because the day summer goes missing H was with them. So there we go right now. Now, all of a sudden, it was just about to hit the four-week mark when Donnie Wells decides to throw a 15-year-old under the bus. Is he trying to claim that it's the 15-year-old's fault that Summer is missing? Because if he is, I'd like to know why he thinks that and what his evidence is to that. Now, according to Candace, she definitely dropped H off before coming home to plant flowers with her mother and daughter Summer. So if that's true, H wasn't at their home to begin with to know anything about that. Unless somebody is lying and something happened elsewhere and Summer never made it home, okay? But then... Where did she go missing from? Okay, so those are just some observations that I have made through his Facebook account. Now, yesterday marked the four-week mark, 28 days. Today is now 29 days. And I looked and I was waiting for Donald to post something on his Facebook to let everyone remember about summer, to think about summer, pray for summer, And, you know, talk about, you know, getting tips in, passing out flyers, you know, keeping her name in the public's eye. And there was nothing posted from him yesterday, which I found very strange. Because if your child is missing, wouldn't the first thing you want to do is keep their name in everyone's ears? Keep your child's picture in everyone's eyes but no Donnie Wells didn't post a thing on Facebook and we haven't heard a word from Candace either now it looks to me that Donnie Wells may have like he closed off where no one can um hit the button to be friends anymore um I I guess maybe he's privated his account I know before yesterday he was you know, becoming friends with just about everybody on Facebook. 
So that's a little strange. I just wonder if he's had enough, if he doesn't want to be in the public eye anymore. But it's just a thought um, that, you know, he blames so many people for this. And yet yesterday, the one day he should have been posting about Summer, and he didn't. But also yesterday, there was a prayer vigil um, done for Summer, and that was really beautiful and nice um, to do. I have not had a chance to watch it. I have been a bit busy, and this week has been kind of tough for me, and um, that has to do with uh, my eldest daughter who passed away. On the 17th will be her angel anniversary, so this time of year is really hard on me. And so that's where the Wells family has my empathy about summer, because that, that is the worst pain you can inflict on someone in their life, is for them to lose their child. And so I have had a very, very tough week you know, when you think about the special moments you had with your child, like birthdays and, and you know, just an everyday normal day is just those things you miss. Like, I'd love one more hug or, you know, to read one more story or have one more talk. And no matter what you do, you can't get it back. And every day you wake up and you realize... No, it really happened. They're gone. They passed on. They're in heaven. And you're here. So in that respect, they have my empathy. Okay? Um, summer has been on my mind a lot because of my daughter having passed away. I don't want anyone to have to feel that pain because it sucks. It sucks so bad. It is unbelievable pain and ang agony. So on July 12th, Don Wells spoke to KTN, and I'd like to go over that interview with you. Um, I listened to it a lot, okay? Um, some of it was very hard to understand. No, you have to understand, they were on the phone, Don was at work. I'm not sure where the KTN reporter was, but there was a lot of noise in the background, so I was trying to go through it and uh, differentiate the um, words that they were saying. So let's get into that. Okay, KTN asked if there were any new developments, and Don responds, no, nothing. KTN says, no, and Don says, no, it's been really discouraging. Only God can turn this around at this point, you know? And KTN says, how is your family coping? And Don says, my wife ain't doing too good. She's not doing too good at all. She's pretty upset, okay? Now, he reflects on him and his wife a lot more than the children. And I understand out in the world right now, Everyone's worried for those three boys. Everyone is. Everyone is feeling the pain that these boys have these parents to deal with that aren't exactly parents of the year, in my opinion. Okay? So, he, he, you're going to see that as a pattern that he's constantly bringing it back to him or his wife or religion in this interview. And KTN responds, I can imagine. Is she needing help or anything? And Don says, no, just kind of some anger issues, you know, and all that stuff on social media. So again, Candace is not upset by what Don is saying. And we have heard her say this plenty of times, well, in the few times that we've seen her talk, saying that, you know, it's not, her daughter that's upsetting her. It's how people are talking about her on social media, that that's what's upsetting her. And I've said to you all before, I'm pretty sure that wouldn't it be your daughter first that upsets you? I wouldn't give a darn what anybody said about me on social media. Who cares? Don't even look at it. 
what you need to do is talk about your daughter. Talk about the things that she liked, the things that she loved. Maybe she didn't like Brussels sprouts. You know, talk about those things. Talk about that last day that you had with her. Talk about all those moments until you didn't see her anymore. That's what you should be doing, Candace. You shouldn't be worrying about what others are saying on social media because you want to know something? Someone is always going to have something to say. Always. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't doesn't matter because what matters is your daughter and your other three children, okay? That's what matters, Candace. Okay, so here we go on. KTN says, I know, that's out of line, that's way out of line. And Don says, yeah. KTN asks, how are your kids doing? Don responds, they're coping with it okay. They're doing okay. I'm not. Again, he's reflecting back to himself and not the boys. I mean, me, I'm upset. I've just made the decision. I've made up my mind not to let Satan win, you know? Now, KTN responds, how do you do that? I mean, what steps do you take personally? Okay, and Donnie says to not let Satan win. He repeats it again. I feel he hides behind his religion. He uses it as a crutch. I'm not sure, in my opinion, if he actually is all that religion, religious. I'd like to know how long he's been a member of this church. Because I know David Dotson um, said to on mass that he's only known the Wells family for three months. So I'm, I think that the Wells family was in another church before this. I'd like to know how often... Donnie Wells was in that church, okay? So um, he says, I mean, I could be down and, um, and not work and let it affect me in every way, but I can't do that. KTN says, I mean, you still got a family to raise, I guess, don't you? And Don says, yeah, yeah, still got to move forward. I still got to go to work. I still got to try, even though I miss her. I wish to God there was a way, you know, but... We live in an evil world. I mean, I ain't the first person to lose a family member or all kinds of tragedies have been happening since the beginning of this recreation. There have been all kinds of bad stuff going on. It does kind of seem like a bad dream or whatever. Yeah, it does. My memories with Summer. Now, this is the only time he uses his daughter's name. Okay, he usually just refers to her as she or her. My memories with Summer and everything is just, that's what kills me. Because we had such a great love for each other. Now remember, Summer, for the first 18 months of her life, she only took to Dawn. She did not take to Candace. So I am sure there was a bond that Summer did have with her dad. You know, there's that dad-daughter relationship. And for some reason, Summer did not take to her mom. And that really leaves me with a lot of questions. But I digress. She loved me, and I don't know why. I've never had someone love me that much in my life. And so it's been awesome between me and her. So he's saying pretty much since he was a child that the only one that loved him like this was Summer. So, you know, we know that there has to be some difficulty between him and Candace. As I've mentioned, on her Facebook page, she lists her relationship status as complicated. And they don't seem very loving to me, in my opinion, to each other. Um, I'd like to know what you guys all think. Um, let me know if, if you think they're in a loving relationship or not. So it's really killed me, he says, since she's been gone. At first, it was so horrific knowing that someone abducted her. Here he is back with the abduction. You're going to see that a lot again, too. And I want to discuss some points with you about an abduction. So that someone abducted her and that cops are looking all around our house knowing she's not there. 
you know, it's like you're talking to yourself. It just don't do no good. But you know, I wish the police would have blocked off both ends of Beach Cake Road and everything else and kept it contained in our own area. Because I'm sure she's hundreds of miles away, you know? He also responds a lot with, you know. It's like he's trying to get the validation of the interviewer from KTN to agree with him on every single point that he makes. Um, I lost count, literally, of how many times he says, you know, you know. And I understand that some people do use that as, like, a common phrase in having a conversation. But to me, it's looking more like he definitely wants some kind of validation. He wants the KTN reporter to agree with him on every single point he is making about his daughter's disappearance, okay? So remember that uh, with all the you knows. They just, I can't blame them or whatever, but I'm upset. I'm really upset you know, but it's too little, too late now. Now here, he's blaming law enforcement, I think. I think he's saying, you know what, if you had done your job right, I wouldn't be in this circumstance, okay? You you should have done this, you should have done that. But, you know, we don't know exactly every step law enforcement has taken. From the beginning, they said that we do not see any signs of an abduction. Now, that's a pretty big clue right there that, you know, Leslie Earhart said from the um, TBI, she said, usually in the first hours, 24 hours, 48 hours, we have some kind of idea of what's going on in a case. And this one, we have none. There's nothing. So that's pretty telling about how law enforcement feels about an abduction and where this case is going. Okay, KTN asks, I guess this has been on your mind, but you've got to move on with the business of living. And Dawn says, right. KTN says, and I guess one of those things is your, oh my goodness, I can't, is your have to go back, is your, have to go back to school, is your kids have to go back to school? And I was wondering if you all have given thought to that. I know it's going to be hard to do, but t- to take them back to school. Sorry, my, my writing, I've been taking lots and lots of notes through this whole case. Don responds, well, I mean, I don't know why, but they're dealing with it okay, more than me. They're doing a lot better than me and Candace are. I don't know why that is, but I don't know. Because when I was in school, he's going to add a story here. Here it is. Because when I was in school, one of our guys, one of the kids in school with us, bought his son a shotgun. And somehow it accidentally went off and killed his dad right in front of him. We never did see that kid back in school again. But that was his daddy, though. There's a difference, I guess. But maybe my kids are looking at it like, maybe God will bring her back, or I don't know. But but statistically speaking, there is a good chance she's already dead, if you look at it statistically. And I hate to think that. I love her with all my heart. But only God, you know, if nothing else, you know, I'll see her in the resurrection. If I keep to the commandments and do what I'm supposed to do, I'll see her in the commandments. I believe he he was supposed to say resurrection there, and he said commandments. If that's the case, you know, again, asking for validation. Now, um, I'm wondering that he brought the story up about when he was a boy, and the little boy brought his gun, and that it accidentally went off and killed his dad. I wonder if he's trying to compare the pain he's feeling to what that boy must have been feeling when his dad died. And maybe also he's comparing how his boys are feeling to their sister's disappearance. Because you have to remember, though, that these are children. They don't think the same way as adults, nor should they. 
they are dealing with an adult topic right now that their baby sister is missing and no one knows where she is. And they know that investigators have been looking for her and are still looking for her. They know that. They know that when they go back to school, their little sister should have been joining them and she won't be now. And that's a lot to take in. So for him to go back to his childhood and compare that story, I don't think it's fair. Um, I, I'm just wondering if he's just using that tragic moment in time to deflect, you know, off of, you know, the way his boys should be feeling or something like that. So KTN goes, so is it just going to be back to business when school starts? And Don responds, yeah, we ain't got a, got a choice. We don't have a choice, you know? KTN says, I was just wondering if there was any fear, concerns to let them out of your sight after. Now, we, we probably, this could be taken anyway. We do know that David Dotson took the boys out and, um, you know, was, you know, keeping them busy because this has been tough. And I understand that, okay? Um, I know that the boys have been making trips. So Don and Candace have been letting their boys out with other people. So I'm not sure how worried they really are, you know, or maybe they just have a lot of trust in these people. I mean, they are their church family, and I understand that, that. That is family, you know, that is mostly a trusting family. So, you know, that's a, a twofold question. And Don responds, well, yeah, definitely. We were sending them down, you know, to the school bus by themselves, you know, but I don't think we will ever do that again. KTN responds, do they get picked up at the end of your road there on Beach Creek? And Don responds, yeah, yeah, yep. KTN says, oh, okay. And of course you're back to work and the kids are going back to school. So it seems like there is no choice but to return to some kind of normalcy from this horrible event. And Don responds, right, exactly, yeah. I'm not gonna let Satan convince me to go drinking or whatever. Don, I wanna know what whatever is, please. You know, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not going down that road. I choose life. I choose God, you know? And that's, again, it's almost like he's saying, uh, do you know that I choose God? Like, God is important to me. I I really do believe he deflects with uh, his religion. And that's probably, you know, I never before in my life, I was weaker. And just the least little thing could be the excuse to get drunk or whatever. There's the whatever again. You know, but not no more. This is the most horrific thing that I have ever thought of happening. And that's something Don and I actually agree on because I told you it is. It is the most horrific thing. KTN asks, has your theory about what happened to Summer changed any since we spoke a couple of weeks ago? Now, Don responds with a long no she was abducted. There's, you know, I forget how you put that reasonable deduction or however you say that you're taught in school that, you know, but by that theory there, she's been abducted 100%. I know Candace wouldn't lie to me about any of the facts. She has no reason to, you know, I mean, she wouldn't, she wouldn't lie. Now that brought up red flags to me right away. And the fact that I think somewhere in the back of Don's mind, he is questioning whether Candace is lying to him, okay? He wouldn't have said it if it hadn't been a thought in his mind. And I think that he believes others are thinking, Don, do you really believe your wife? And that's why he wanted to address it. He also wanted the KTN reporter to agree with him that, oh, no, your wife wouldn't lie to you, even though this reporter does not know his wife. You know, he hasn't 
spoken to her. He doesn't know anything about her. So he wouldn't be able to agree with Don in this circumstance. Okay, so KTN says, I think somebody said or you told the media that she took a lie detector test and you took one also and that you were cleared on any suspicion based on that. And Don has a response to this. Yeah, well, I don't know if we were completely cleared because that's not admissible in court. He knows his rights because he has a long rap sheet. But, but yeah, we were both. I mean, at first, I didn't get no sleep for two days. I couldn't sleep. I was, you know, it was the worst pain and misery I have ever felt in my life. But I wasn't able to take the lie detector test. They made me wait a little bit. But when I did take it, I passed. They made Candace wait five days longer to take hers, you know, because she just wasn't able to. She tried and she wasn't able to. Now, he's going to tell you something about the lie detector test, but remember that she tried and she wasn't able to. If we go back to on masked interview with Allison, Allison said that Candace was sitting in the back of a police car and she called H and said, I just failed my polygraph. Okay, this is what Allison said. So I'm not making it up. I'm just going off of an interview. She said, I failed my, my polygraph. What did you tell the police? So I find his words interesting there that she tried and she wasn't able to. I wonder if she did try and she did fail because David Dotson also told on mass that she she's taken more than one polygraph and that on the first exam she had some um, I'm sorry I can't think of the word she had some um, lies okay I can't think of the other word you guys right now um, and, and uh, so I'm wondering if that's when maybe she decided to stop it and said, you know, okay, that's it. We're done here. And um, I think that Don might be confirming that there was more than one test in his words here, but he's going to come back around to that. So just pay attention to the little bits he says, because I believe in every, every thing that he says there's bits of truth and there are bits of lies in it. And I think you can take that in a lot of cases when you listen to interviews. There's always some truth mixed in there, right? There's, you know, you heard the saying there's his side, her side, and then there's the truth. Well, you know, I believe that in this case that we're riddled with lies and we're riddled with truth, Okay. Uh, let me see where I am now. Um, so when, um, so he says that he passed, uh, she passed on the second try. It's not, you know, people are saying that we failed and we took another test. Now, see, he knows that David Dotson said this to Juan Mast, that they took more than one test. So that's interesting that he's going against a friend of his. And David Dotson told on mass that he told the Wells that he was going on their podcast. And, um, you know, I'm wondering if the Wells told him certain information to say and then they recanted or, you know, is the lies becoming too much in my opinion and I can't keep their story straight. So that I, I, I'm finding interesting that he's saying, you know, we didn't take more than one polygraph. We never failed any tests. But again, when you look back, he said she, you know, Candace tried, but she couldn't. So I really wonder if she did try and she had some discrepancies in her polygraph and then took another but that's the case. We just weren't able to. So when we did take them, we both passed, you know, our test. KTN asked, I mentioned that it measures changes in your blood pressure or something based on if you're telling lies, your blood pressure changes. 
But then your blood pressure, if you're having a heart-wrenching experience, probably changes anyways. Dawn responds, the way it works is that it measures your brain activity. That's not true, you guys. It, it cannot measure brain activity. It's more to do with um, sweat, pulse, blood pressure. Um, let me see if I get it all. Um, pulse, blood blood pressure, sweat. Uh, I might be missing one there, but I, I um, have something to go over with you guys about that. So it has no way to detect about brain waves, okay? And whenever you lie, you have to think about that lie. When you stick to the truth, it just comes out, you know? The truth is the truth. But when you lie, you got to think about that a little bit. Your heart might jump a little bit or whatever, but they look at all of that it's easier to tell the truth, put it that way. And then he has a laugh, which um, I made note of it because I believe it was a nervous laugh. I think the whole concept of thinking about the polygraph made him nervous. And I actually do not believe, as I've told you in previous videos, I don't believe law enforcement has told them whether they passed or not. And uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. KTN asks, this is a hard question to ask, but did they ever question your sons? Don responds, yeah, they had taken them into specialists because they just can't come out and question them. But yes, they have questioned all of them. They even gave my mother-in-law a lie detector test. Now KTN responds, oh, wow. Don responds, and she also passed. So everybody and their family has passed, you know, because that's just how Don Wells sees it. But um, that is a question mark for me. I have made a red flag notification on that response. And that's my opinion. Moving on. KTN asks, okay, I didn't go up to your house when they took the roadblock down. I didn't want to just go busting up there uninvited, but I did go to the end of your driveway and look up. And I mean, for that, for someone to go up there, not knowing about where they're going to find once they get up there seems highly unlikely because that's straight up and you can't see where you're going. You don't know what's ahead of you. Interesting. And I'm going to link this interview in the description box below, but the KTN reporter had video of going through this driveway, and it is unbelievable, but you really can't see anything. You can't see the house from when you're starting up that driveway. And it's just weeds on each side. You don't see anything. It's absolutely, you have no, he's right, you have no idea what you're coming up upon. Now, Don responds, We've had several people sneaking around there, though. We've had them sneaking around at night, the middle of the night. We've never had somebody up there at 5.30 in the afternoon that we know of, you know, but they didn't come up the driveway. They came up the dog trail from the woods. Uh, and this raised a red flag for me here because if you have been following this case and you have followed his interviews, he says in his other interviews, okay, first there was a kidnapper, next it was kidnappers and or um, a human trafficking ring, okay, and that was from the road, and he they also mentioned, and he mentioned in a Facebook post that the red Toyota Tacoma that they're looking for, or maroon Toyota Tacoma, was parked at the end of his driveway on the road. So I'm finding it interesting now that we're about a month into her disappearance, that he's changing his story yet again. And now that they're not coming from the road. I found that extremely interesting because I think the reporter from KTN kind of told him, Who's going to take that chance of going up to your driveway and not knowing what in the world is up there? You could have attack dogs coming at me, which we know that they have dogs. We don't know how many dogs exactly, but 
And we still don't know if the dogs would bark or not bark. I mean, I guess that's up to interpretation of if you're being around the dogs, okay? But not knowing who lives in the house, you know, uh, what kind of security you have. I don't see people going up there to try and kidnap a little girl, okay? It just doesn't seem right. But now he's going in the other direction, and he's saying that they were coming from the woods, from the dog trail, okay? Now, also in his reference to people sneaking around at night, we know that there is drug problems in his area, and he's said it before, okay? And if you live in a, like, a country area like this, I'm wondering if people are sneaking around partying, like, drinking, partying, you know, lover's lane, you know, that kind of thing. I don't think it really has anything to do with the Wells family. I just think it has to do with the people, you know, just trying to party. Okay, so KTN responds, oh, okay. Don then says, and the dog that they use... That is where the scent took them, down through the woods, not the driveway. KTN asks, where did the dog scent end? And Don says, at the road. Ben Hill Road was where the dog scent ended. And KTN responds, oh, man. Don says, yep. So that right there, I already knew all that. But that there just confirmed it for me. Yes, Don. Yes, Don. We know. You've known from the beginning that she's been abducted. But that's my opinion of how you see things. Um, let's see. Now, KTN uh, asked, do you believe she's still alive? Do you have any intuition that she might still be out there somewhere? Don responds, I have no idea. All I know is uh, I believe in God. I don't believe in any psychic stuff. KTN responds, oh, man, that stuff is horrible. I've seen some of that on YouTube. That's terrible. Why would somebody that their morals of the person that would put that out there, what they've been saying? Don responds, somebody made a fake account of me and they put it out there that there's some other woman that I buried her body at the lake. And so TBI was out there at the lake trying to dig up looking for this woman's body. They couldn't get a hold of me because I was in church. But they had been out there looking for her body. That's just ridiculous what people are doing. And they're going with these sick psychics and what they're saying and doing whatever they can to get their story out there. But the Bible says clearly that it's an abomination because when you're talking to a psychic and you think that they are talking to your dead relatives or whatever, that's untrue because Jesus made it clear that when you die in your sleep, and, and when you die, you sleep until the resurrection. You are in no conscious state whatsoever. You are just unconscious, asleep, as Jesus put it, until the resurrection. So if you're talking to someone, it's an evil spirit. KTN says, let me ask you this. Is there anything that your family needs? Is there anything that the community can do aside from tipsters and information and things like that? Is there anything that you people and your family need? Don responds, no. I think we're good on everything. The only thing I wish is a country. You know, the way these kids are coming up missing left and right and all the drugs. Man, we need to send our military into our own country. So basically, he's asking for martial law. Okay. You know, that's my opinion. We send our military everywhere in the world to fight terrorism. Well, I think that it's time to turn it on our own country to fight terrorism. Okay, so now he's also adding terrorism to his daughter's disappearance. I'm running out of thoughts of how many different scenarios you have come up there with, Don. But okay, moving on. They can't seem to catch these guys nowhere. We need our military, you know? 
Put them to good to some good use. I mean, that's what I wish. KTN says, okay, well, I know you're probably on break. I'm going to let you get back to work. I was wondering if Mrs. Wells would want to meet and talk anymore about how things are going. Is she up to that? Don responds, right now she's so upset. It's just getting worse for her. I mean, it's bad for me too. I'd do anything to get my baby back, but I've got to put my faith in God. Again, he's using God. If it wasn't for that, I would have lost it a long time ago. Okay, and some of that I do understand because you do want to lose it completely. Okay, I understand that. If it wasn't for that, um, I mean, God says, pray to him and pray that she's okay, that he will pull you through with his mighty right arm. Police can't come up with nothing. All these people on Facebook all over the world can't come up with nothing. Nobody can. Only God can. KTN responds, right. In 30 years, I've never seen anything like this happen. Don responds, me either. I mean, I've never seen anything like this in my life. When I lived in Houston, it was pretty bad out that way. All kinds of crazy stuff out there. KTN says, there was never, you, you never, there was never someone that just disappeared without a clue. I mean, I'm sure it happens, but none that I've ever seen in my life. Don responds, well then, well, when there's an abduction, what else would you call it? but a disappearance. I don't understand that. But yeah, somebody was either hiding in the weeds there waiting for, and then I couldn't understand what he said, so I just wrote an audible. Came into the basement, but we weren't. He says, but we weren't. And then he says, or they weren't 30 feet away when she got gone, maybe 40 at the most. So somebody's got her. KTN says, well, I sure appreciate you talking to me. I didn't want to call too much and be a pest after. It's been a couple of weeks, and I wanted to check back in. Don says, yes, sir, I appreciate you. KTN says, take care. I'll be praying for you. Don says, all right, thank you. And the interview is over. Now, let's go back to the, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice here. Let's go back to the polygraph, um, uh, polygraph statements, okay? Hawkins County Sheriff said, I believe this was on the same day or the day after Don Wells spoke with KTN. He spoke with Kristen Kwan, Ronnie Lawson. Now remember this. He said, quote, everybody is still a person of interest, end quote. Okay, that is something right there. Because if they did take a polygraph, Okay, which I believe they did. I think that they have a really good idea from that. I mean, you know, it's not science, you know, 100%. It's more a more of like an interpretation test, which is why it isn't admissible in court. So the Ronnie Lawson said that he wants landowners to still keep looking, checking their their um security cameras, trail cameras, and especially going back to the day and time that she disappeared. And he said, what you may think is a little something, he said, could mean everything to us. Okay. So keep that in mind, guys. If if you live out in that area, keep checking, you know, the weeds and the grass, you know, are overgrown in some areas. Check everywhere. You know, she could be in, in any crevice. And please go back and check your trail cams, your security cameras, because you never know what you might find. And if you do have a real tip, then please, please call the TBI. Okay, now I wanted to tell you what a polygraph does measure. It measures body movement, breathing with the diaphragm, breathing of the chest, perspiration, pulse, and blood pressure, okay? And here's just a little tidbit of how it works. It's, it's like, like a very small Wikipedia, like um, little information here for you. 
Sensors measure body changes as subject answers yes, no questions. Data recorded on computer. There's the blood pressure cuff records pulse and blood pressure. There's rubber bands placed over chest and abdomen that record breathing. And then there's two metal plates attached to fingers that record sweating. Now I know a famous um, polygraph test that I'm sure we've all witnessed is Chris Watts taking the polygraph. Um, and we could see the setup that Tammy did when um, she gave him the polygraph. Now, something interesting that I just want to point out about a polygraph is um, when I was researching about polygraphs, I read um, something very interesting. And scientists have said that, well, scientists don't put a lot of faith in polygraphs. They, they just don't see the science behind it, proving that it, that it helps, you know, di differentiate between the truth and lies. But something that Japan follows is that they use a third party to conduct a polygraph because they want somebody that doesn't know the case, that they don't know the facts, that they don't know anything about the individual that they will be questioning. And they also use a multi choice question and see on the responses how the person reacts to what is considered the right answer. So they go back and they look at those um, instances, whereas most polygraph tests that we've seen are yes and no answers, okay, as in what happened with Christopher Watts, okay. So those are just some things to keep in mind about the polygraph, okay? And um, I believe that's all the updates that um, I have for you guys. Um, his deductive reasoning, um, one thing I want to mention about that is that usually with deductive reasoning, you have one idea, right? When a scenario first comes upon, you make an assumption. And then as you collect more data, you make a second um, premise that's regarding your first assumption, okay? Then you want to test your, your different assumptions out and weigh them against what evidence you have, okay? And then you make a conclusion, okay? But Don, all you have come up with is that she's been abducted. Now your stories have changed on how she was abducted, but she in your mind has been 100% abducted from the very beginning that you first heard what happened with your daughter. And I'm still finding it incredibly, incredibly interesting that he says Candace would not lie to him. I... um. I think he thinks that she is lying to me, to him, in my opinion. But that's all I have for you guys. I wish that I had some magic that I could just sprinkle out there and, you know, that I was able to bring her back safely. But I don't have that. I feel as frustrated as you guys. Um, I know a lot of us are, are broken hearted that this beautiful little girl is is just gone like she has vanished into thin air and exactly like the ktn reporter said we don't have any clues and i sure hope that law enforcement is doing better than us i hope they do have some sense of where this investigation is going i mean they have not told us anything you know about the investigation which of course is the correct thing to do hold everything that you do have or your assumptions close to the vest so when you do get the information you need you can prosecute who you need to prosecute but again um you know law enforcement is waiting for that one tip you know that one tip that can bring them the information they need to move this investigation along and if that somebody knows who 
is the owner and or driver of that Toyota Tacoma, they need to come forward. They need to come forward and talk to law enforcement because I think they're going to find you. I think somebody knows who you are, you know, and eventually something will be said because what is most important at the end of the day is Summer Wells. None of it, none of the other adults in this, you know, are important like she is. The boys are important, yes. You know, I I fear for them. And one more thing that I wanted to talk to you about, something law enforcement hasn't done is said, you know, parents, please keep your children in or keep your eyes on them at all times, you know. We may have an abductor out there. They have not come forward and said that, you know. They also have not said, you know, um, we believe we know where this case is going. You guys have nothing to worry about, as they did in Tristan Bailey's case, where, you know, they had a, a good idea or, you know, in their investigation, they figured out, you know, who they presumed committed the act of murder on Tristan, you know, but again, we have to remember everyone is innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. And as though, you know, I cringe about it, you all may cringe about it. I guess we have to keep that in mind with Don and Candace, even if our little spidey senses are going off and saying, I think they did it. But, you know, they are innocent until proven guilty. So we just keep that in mind. Keep you know, summer in our prayers that she will be brought home. I hope you guys are well and having a good week and I will talk to you all soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.